Now you're also uh, moving into the Kubernetes space. And if you look at Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes, these are the tech now, <laughs> first of all, they are uh, housed at the same home, which is Linux Foundation. Uh, but what is happening is that uh, customers are leveraging both these technologies. It's not Cloud Foundry versus Kubernetes. Uh, even the Cloud Foundry Foundation, they came out with their own distribution. I think it's called KubeCF or something like that. But uh, from, from any nice pers perspective, how do you manage to maintain a balance between Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes? Because if I'm not wrong, your customers are leveraging both these technologies. The Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry are not the same. They, are, they don't solve the same problem. Um, and that's something that is easy to, uh, to overlook. Um, if, if, for example, um, you want to build your own platform and you are willing to dig into the technology, uh, deal with different ways of, of, of uh, um, networking components such as service mesh technologies, um, you're, you're willing to... Write your own YAML specifications if if you want to deploy an application. Uh, you you are willing to install um, components, well, such as a service mesh, into your Kubernetes cluster and and you know get your hands dirty into technology. Then Kubernetes is a good thing for you. It it, it is way more flexible than a, a Cloud Foundry. However, if you are focused on writing applications that work and you want to delegate the heavy lifting of application operation without the involvement of DevOps so that you will have a team that's more focused on application development, then you need them to you need to provide them with a higher level abstraction than Kubernetes or plain Kubernetes, so to say. And there's, that's where Cloud Foundry is, is absolutely uh, unbeatable to this day. Uh, you can um, deploy your applications either as containers or as uh, using container images or using build packs, which gives you as a as a as a organization large very much control over how application code is transformed into something that's been operated. So this, for example, the build pack layer is where you can also enforce company policy company policies such as security policies. The next thing is that Cloud Foundry has an integrated marketplace where it creates a standardized interface called the Open Service Broker API that um, standardizes how stateful applications such as data serves, such as databases and messages are created. So in a Cloud Foundry environment, once an application developer has, uh, has gotten used to it, it's very easy to deploy an application without the help of anybody else. It's just a CF push and a CF create service, and you have a stateful application up and running. Now with Kubernetes, this is also possible, but it's way less convenient. It requires a deeper understanding on how Kubernetes works. So that's, that's one thing. The second thing is behind the scenes, a lot of the problems that Cloud Foundry has, for example, you deploy an application in the container a container is started in the background requires a container scheduler. So you need container orchestration, and that's a non-trivial problem to solve. And over the time, uh, over the years, uh, Kubernetes um, has become more popular, and Cloud Foundry has rewritten its container orchestration several times. Because the bigger your clients are, the more of the underlying problematic actually shows, and you have to reinvent container scheduling. And I think that can be considered to some degree a solved problem now. And it seems like Kubernetes has become the de facto standard for container orchestration. Therefore, it is quite natural that Cloud Foundry uh, carves out its own container orchestrator and integrates Kubernetes. So in the future, it is very likely that Kubernetes applications will be scheduled on a, a Kubernetes so that the Cloud Foundry user experience will prevail, while the container scheduler will be Kubernetes. So there's not, not a contradiction at all. It's, um, it's two different perspectives on application development platforms. Now, the next thing is um, Kubernetes does not only cannibalize the territory of application deployment, but also to some degree in the territory of the infrastructures. 
So we've briefly mentioned OpenStack. And OpenStack has uh, you know, had these expectations that there is a free open source AWS software that you can set up on your hardware, which is not the case because building an infrastructure is hard work and you need to have the right hardware, the right networking setup, uh, and also people who are deeply involved in getting those infrastructures to work. And then yet, you still have an OpenStack interface to start a virtual machine. You have to talk to the OpenStack API. So this is just another infrastructure API. And if you count them, I, I count at least four, five, or six different infrastructure APIs. People don't want to interface with six different APIs. They want to describe their workloads. They don't want to um, take care of six different integrations. So I think Kubernetes with the container movement, the way it, it provides an abstraction that's rather easy, easy to describe a distributed system has become so popular because people are fed up with solving a problem on how to run an application if that's to be done on a global infrastructure. So if at some point you push a button and you get a Kubernetes, and well, that's maybe solved, but what's not solved that these Kubernetes clusters, regardless on which infrastructure you use, provide you with exactly the same abilities. They are configured in the same way. They have the same versions. They do backup and restore in the same way. If that would be the case, then you could abstract workloads using Kubernetes. So in this regard, Kubernetes also cannibalizes in the territory of infrastructure providers. A reason why if you look into infrastructure providers, whether it's an OpenStack vendor, whether it's a popul popular large scale infrastructure provider, or whether it's a, a virtualization provider such as VMware, they all have strong Kubernetes products because they see this trend exactly as I described it. It, 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 it transforms not only the way applications are deployed, but also how virtual machines are deployed. Um, so that's going to be very interesting, how, how these heterogeneities that come with those different flavors of Kubernetes are leveled out. It's something that we also investigate a lot of our time to make global platforms as smooth as possible.